Hello, Sound Engraver here, and today we will learn how to build a kick drum in Super Collider. To do that, we need a few things. First, we need a signal, and next we will need an output bus to send that signal to our headphones or to our speakers. We will also need an amplitude value, so we'll be able to hear that signal. We will also need two envelopes, one envelope being the signals envelope, the main signal passing through and released and, and, and thus having the synth free itself. And the second envelope we will need uh, acts more like a frequency sweep. So before we get started in the construction, uh, the synth construction, let's take a moment and talk about the construction of an envelope. So I'll just go as basic as it comes. Uh, you'll see three values that I've inputted here, and those are just three points in which um, a signal or a sound file passes through. You will need time levels, which those will pass through. And you will also need uh, curve values in, in the shape of this envelope. You will see in just a second here. There we are. So as you can see, it ramps up from zero to level one, back down to zero in the, in the course, in this case, the course of a, a second up to one and another second back down to zero. And if we notice, I put the negative value here. If we actually were to change that, it would simply, the ramp, the shape of this ramp would simply be inverted. So I, I prefer the negative value to be on the right side of the array. I think it's a little smoother. So let's get started and, and uh, build the synth. Whenever you generate a tone in Super Collider, you will need a synth def. You will need a name for that synth def, so I'm just gonna call it kick. And you also need a set of arguments and variables. So for the arguments, uh, I'm just going to start with the values I want for our frequency sweep. And then I will uh, insert the signals uh, envelope, those values for the, si uh, the signal envelope. And for arguments, you can just name, name it however you want. So in this case, I'm going to implement three frequencies like you see here. And those frequency times, so I'm just going to call it um, Freakter1 and Freakter2. Also, we'll need those frequency curve values. So freak C1, freak C2. I mean, this is just how I order my, my names and arguments and all that. Uh, next, we will need uh, the values for our signals envelope. We need an attack, a release. We will also need curve values. And by the way, you can also use ADSR, a uh, attack, decay, sustain, release, but uh, I'm just going to go basic here. So an attack, a release, a curve, a two curve values, C1 and C2. We'll need an amplitude. We'll need to pan the signal and we'll be doing that at the center, at the nose, and we will also need our output bus. Before we get into the variables, let's just go ahead and fill these arguments in. I'm going to start, uh, I want the kick drum to start at a thousand hertz and then ramp it down to maybe about 10 hertz, passing through another low frequency here, probably about 50 hertz. And then I will just go ahead and do 10 hertz for our last frequency before the synth releases itself. I think that works. <laughs> uh, and now uh, the frequency durations. And I'm going to keep these rather short. And if I, if I had long, longer values, it actually, you'd actually hear a pitch sweeping down and not the actual kick drum sound that I want. Uh, and for our curve values, I'm just going to go ahead and do what we've done before with this envelope. With this envelope we've seen here. All right, for our attack, we'll probably do about a hundredth of a second. For 
for release, um, I'll give it a second. I wouldn't go beyond one second or any longer than one second. And this is because this is not an acoustic kick drum where you'd have an attack and a nice decay and a release. Uh, you know, the sound does not taper off. If we had a 10 second release, it would essentially be 1000 hertz ramping down to 10 frequencies, uh, I'm sorry, 10 hertz, which is ground noise. So uh, we, don't, we don't want ground noise to sustain that long and we don't want sta uh, synths stacking atop one another. So uh, just keep it real, real short. Uh, for our first curve value, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to one. For our second curve value, I'm gonna go ahead and do a larger negative number or smaller negative number, however you, 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 you would put it. And our amplitude, um, zero being our lowest or no amplitude and one being our highest, I'm gonna do a safe value about 0.8. You don't really wanna go past one, especially with something like a kick drum. And we'll pan it to zero. So the left ear will be negative one, the right ear being positive one and zero being right at the nose. And our default output bus will be zero. And that's the first value of the array, uh, the bus channel array that Super Collider offers us um, and what we would send to our hardware or to our speakers. All right, so for our variables, we will need our signal, uh, an envelope, for that signal and also our frequency sweep, which I just will call freak sweep. We'll start with the freak, uh, freak sweep first. It's kind of hard to say. And this will also be an envelope. We will, instead instead of using values 0, 1, 0, we're going to use our argument values. And we're gonna add our freak durations. And we're also going to add our frequency curve values. Next is our signal envelope, which will also be a normal envelope. I will include going from zero, ramping to one, ramping back down to zero. And instead of the time levels that we saw in our first example, we will be using our set, um, our attack and release that I had set in before. And also our curve, uh, our curve values, I should say. And implementing KR2, that's just a uh, done action value which will uh, free the synth once the envelope is completed. We're going to add our main signal now, which will come in the form of a sine, a sine oscillator using our freak sweep. And pi over 2, and essentially that is the signal, the ramp, or before the ramp, starting at the high frequency or at the peak of the sine wave and then ramping down. And of course we will need to scale it with our envelope or uh, use, use a multiple, which is our env. And also we will include a pan uh, eugen for that, using our signal as the input, our pan as our position at the nose, at the center, and also um, uh, its level being scaled by our amplitude value. And using an output eugen, I will send our signal out to our speakers. Hi. Oh, there you go. I was about to make an error. Now that should be good. All right, let's see if we got this. Boom. Yes. All right. I'm getting faster at this. <laughs> Takes practice. All right. So that should be good. And now we should be able to hear a nice, well, it's not going to be nice and I'll show you why, but it won't be unpleasant. 
uh, we will uh, call the synth using a global variable and using our name. All right, let's see how that sounds. All right, good, good. So a nice release. You can you can see it at the, the level meters down here. It's it is about a second's release. A little little faster than that. Um, so you can hear a little bit of that kind of high clip. And that is the thousand hertz. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change that our um, our argument value uh, freak a. Instead of a thousand hertz, I'm simply going to do 500, and it's going to sound like, yeah, that's it. So nice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give our amplitude just a little bit more boost. Here we are, and that's it. That's how you do a kick drum, and you can always change the values to you know something awesome like this, nice and clean. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's it's meaty, but it's not dirty. It's just nice. Uh, to something atrocious, like fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but you know, Super Collider is flexible um, in that you you can change those values to your liking. Uh, so before I adjourn, let's just go ahead and see what these uh, these values look like on the visual scale. So. In this case, I'm going to use our uh, Freak A, which I changed to 500, and go down to 50, and go down to 10. In the course of one hundredth of a second, and about like that. And this is what it looks like. Not elegant at all, you know, but you can, you can see it starts at 500, and ramps it down to 50 quite quick, you know, as quick as a hundredth of a second. And then also just kind of, you know, dying away, just tapering off. Uh, you can see the line is above, so it's about 10 frequencies here. Uh, so it doesn't look as pleasant, but the reason why it sounds smooth is simply our signals envelope. And our attack, in this case, is it, it is a hundredth of a second, and our release is about one. Now, as you had seen before, uh, one and negative one being this, and, and and that's nice, but you don't, you definitely don't hear that slower ramp. What you do hear, and now what you will see, is a very nice envelope shape, and uh, that's it. That's how you produce a kick tone and. And that's how you build a kick drum in Super Collider.